Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel, Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you a marked as to read video. So, my marked as to read videos, in case you don't know, is a series of videos that I normally normally post every month where I talk about all of the books that I was inspired to mark as to read on Goodreads. Um, but I have in fact not posted one of these since January because I was, well like since my January marked as to read video, because I was MIA for a little while there and I just haven't had a chance to catch back up on them. So this one is going to in fact cover the months of February, March and April. I thought about just kind of skipping, um, skipping ahead or giving up this series entirely because it's not the most popular on my channel but I really enjoy filming them and I enjoy being able to look back on these videos and remember where I first heard about books um, and all of that type of thing so I'm going to continue on with them and it wasn't too onerous to do catch-ups of these because I wasn't marking too many like normally each month I have kind of between like 10 to 20 books um, and my numbers were lower for a lot of these months so it is what it is. So in February, I marked 12 books, but then in March, I only marked six. Um, and in April, I only marked four. So 22 in total that we've got to cover in this video. Um, so let's jump straight in and talk about them. So um, the first lot is obviously from February. The first book that I marked as to read, I saw on a Goodreads blog post for anticipated YA reads of February. Um, and the book that I saw there was What Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This cover obviously drew me in, and I've seen this around a little bit since I first marked it as to read. This is a gothic horror fantasy. I think it's YA. Gothic horror fantasy about a girl who is in a family of monsters. Um, and she, I believe, was at a boarding school, and she's like returned from boarding school um, because something violent, a violent incident that happened at the boarding school, and now. There's like a mysterious stranger who's turned up at her home. I'm not really too sure of the details, but really it was the cover that drew me in. <clears throat> the next one I saw on another Goodreads blog post, that was for a blog post that they did about um, mysteries um, by black women. Um, one that I was interested in from that list is Blanche on the Lamb by Barbara Ainsley. This is, sorry, Barbara Neely. This is a cozy mystery series, the first in a cozy mystery series with a black female protagonist. Don't know too much about it apart from that, but it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, the next uh, one that I marked as uh, to read was one that I just have seen around for ages and just had never marked as to read previously. And that is Get a, Loaf, <coughs> Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Um, this one has been, you guys have all heard of it. It's been very, very popular on uh, BookTube. It is the first in a companion romance series that follows three sisters. Um, and that's all I really know about it. Uh, the next one, I can't remember where I heard about it. I, I normally keep pretty good notes um, of when I mark books as to read in order to film these videos, but I just didn't make any notes on this one. So I'm not sure where I heard about it, but it is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Um, I haven't read any of Shay Earnshaw's previous uh, releases. Um, I do own one of them on my TV, but I'm always interested in her books. And I believe this is her first adult publication. Um, and it's about a man who has this like kind of special ability where he can like locate people um, bait, like off a single object. Like he can like hold an object and then kind of like tell where the person is or something. Um, and he's given the task to find the author of these like really dark children's stories. And I believe that he's undertaking that when he then goes missing. Um, I think he like goes to a commune and then like he goes missing and like, I don't know, it's all following that story. It all sounded very interesting. Um, the next couple that I marked as to read were from another Goodreads blog post. This one was from just one of their like hitting shelves posts that they do about like upcoming, like recent publications. The first that I saw, there was a book called Dark Horses by Suzanne Mahalik. This is a kind of, I don't know if it's YA because it's very dark, but it's kind of a coming of age story about a girl who is a um, like Olympic horse rider hopeful like she's trying to get into like the Olympics for horse riding and her father is like her tra her trainer but they have a very abusive relationship I believe sexually abusive relationship um and I think believe it's about she then meets a boy um and that makes her reflect which I don't love that vehicle for reflecting on it but I believe it's about her reflecting on that relationship with her father oh, the next one from that uh, blog post was all Girls by um, Emily Layden. This is another coming of age story. This one is just, it's set at a prestigious New England prep school, which 
tick 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 love that as a setting and it just i just know that it follows like nine different perspectives and i think it's just seeing like nine different girls all from this boarding school um and their different perspectives on like going to school at this prep school and it's like a coming of age story just seemed interesting <clears throat> and the next one was from another goodreads blog post uh there were well, four, I think I marked from this Goodreads blog post, but upcoming historical fiction releases. So the first one that I marked from that blog post was The House on Vesper Sands by Parrick. I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. O'Donnell. This one is set in London, 1893. Um, and there is a woman who is a seamstress who like jumps from like a high window um, and is killed. Um, but there's a message that's like stitched into her skin. It sounds delightfully creepy. Uh, the next one I marked um, was The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr., which I hadn't heard anything about this when I marked it as true, but have now seen it around because um, I believe this has been nominated for a bunch of like literary awards. This is set in the South, um, uh, in like the slave uh, period of American history. Um, and it is about two black slaves, male black slaves, who I believe um, fall in love. I believe it's like quite a dark... Um, like gritty look at like, well, how else can you look at it? But you know what I mean? Um, the next one that I'm after to um, read is Hour of the Witch by Chris Bojalian. This one I was found quite intriguing because I have read The Flight Attendant by Chris Bojalian, which is a very different type of premise from this, which has since been made into a television show. Um, this one is set in Boston, 1662. following a 24 year old who is the second wife of this man who I, is like this really like cruel man and she wants to divorce him which obviously casts her in a terrible light because it's 1662 um and then i like through that and like some other things that do, i do think that she has some like you know working with herbs and types of things she's basically suspected to be a witch i was intrigued um and the next one from that blog post um was mary jane by jessica aya blau this is set in 1970s baltimore and follows a shy 14 year old girl who over the summer becomes like the nanny to this um, family, well, like to this family, where I think the father, I don't know if it's just a father and a mother, if it's a single father, I'm not sure, where he is like a really like prominent psychiatrist. Um, and she, so she becomes the nanny for the, his children, but then realizes like that he has agreed for like that summer to be, um, to help this like famous movie star and like, rock star i'm not sure if it's like a rock star man and a movie star woman or vice versa who are a couple like basically dry out or whatever they're like going through drug alcohol issues and so those people move into the house as well um and it's all kind of about that it just sounded very interesting the next one is from you guessed it a goodreads blog post um this one was a goodreads blog post they did for ya murder mystery like gothic murder mysteries um I mean, they had me at hello. Um, the first, the one that I marked from that God post is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. And this is like a, so Mina um, and it's vampires. It's obviously a take on um, like, you know, kind of spinning on the Dracula thing. It is set in New Orleans. Um, and there is, I think it's set in the nineties as well. It's like New Orleans Fang Fest 95. Um, and it's about a girl who takes a job at like this, like um, murder mansion horror movie mansion it says um and then she finds a body there with holes two little little holes in the side of the neck so that just sounded like a whole lot of fun and then the final one that i marked us to read in february was actually recommended to me um by my friend mel i don't think that she's read it i think she just thought that i would enjoy it um because it's um well it's called leaving isn't the hardest thing by lauren hoff um this is non-fiction and it's about a girl who a woman who um grew up in the cult known as the family um, and I am always very interested in both fiction and nonfiction surrounding cults. So I had that one. Now moving on to the books that I marked us to read in March. The first... Apologies, you guys. My cats decided that was a good time to have a fight. Um, so the first one that I marked us to read in March was from a Grey's blog post um, that was like just about like meeting the authors of thrillers. Um, and in that, the, the authors always like talk about thrillers that they have enjoyed. And I can't remember who talked about it, but it's a book called In the Deep by Loreth. I've written Loreth. Is that a name? I'm not sure. Leveth and White. I'm sorry, my handwriting is pulling. Um, and it's about a woman who's had this really hard life and she meets a man who's like um, helps her, um, like really helps her in her life. However, he's then murdered. Um, that's what I really know about it. 
Um, and but I believe it's Australian, maybe. So there's that. Um, the next one's from a Goodreads blog post about uh, rising stars in speculative fiction. Um, and I marked a book called Conjure Women by Afia Atakora. Um, and this one is about three women. <clears throat> excuse me, three women. Um, I believe one of them is like a mother and daughter. Um, and then I believe that they're um they work for a household and then it's also the um like the master's daughter um and that's set during the civil war um and beyond though i think it starts kind of around the civil war but is like for like a generational like spans a long period of time wow english great um and i just sounded really interesting um the next one is from another goodreads blog post about like upcoming releases the hitting shelves post that they do this one is called the memory collectors by kim neville this one is about a woman this sounds so intriguing this is like kind of like a magical realism type story i think it's about a woman who can feel the emotions left behind on objects um and then about another woman who hoards items she like collects items and her house is like filled with all of these items but the amount of items and the emotions on them is like starting to like make the people who live like in the area around her, I know it's starting to like affect those people. And then it's about these two women like meeting, coming together in some way. I don't know. It just sounded really, really interesting. Um, the next one is a book that I saw on NetGalley um, and is um, called Bad Girls Never Say Die by Jennifer Mateu. I think is how we're pronouncing that. Um, I haven't read her um, other well, I think she's got several books, but Moxie was quite a popular one that I haven't read. This is another historical fiction that was set in 1964 in Houston and is about kind of a girl who is like one of the like notorious kind of bad girls. Um, she's like in like a group of friends. They just like, you know, give zero fucks. But she is saved in some way by one of the like, quote unquote, like kind of good girls. And it's about her like perspectives on things really changing following that. Um, so that sounded really interesting. Uh, the next one was from a Goodreads blog post um, about anticipated YA releases for April. Um, and this is a book called Witches Steeped in Gold by Sianan Smart. Um, this one, again, I've kind of seen around on Booktube since then. It's a YA paranormal about a girl who is in jail. It was like a YA like paranormal fantasy, a girl who's in jail and then the queen's daughter and they're kind of enemies who form an alliance. I believe it's a Jamaican-inspired fantasy Give me one second, my cats are going, driving me mental today. Apologies again. Does anybody else's cats do that? Winnie doesn't really do it, but Giles will sometimes just start meowing his head off for no apparent reason. Just meowing at the top of his lungs repeatedly for no reason. But he's stopped now, <laughs> so moving on. Then the final book that I'm actually to read in March, I actually just saw on Twitter, um, but is by a very like prominent uh, author, Tiffany D. Jackson, um, it's her newest book, White Smoke. I haven't read anything by Tiffany G. Jackson, but I, I'm interested in all of her books. Um, and this one in particular is about um, a, like a haunting story. There's like a house on a hill. Sorry, this is, no. <laughs> this is described as the haunting of Hill House meets Get Out and like involves ghosts and stuff. Like I was intrigued. Um, and so I marked that one was to read. Um, and then in April, I marked four books as to read. The first one was from... You guessed it, a Goodreads blog post. This one was um, looking at different mystery subgenres and a book that they recommended for the subgenre of psychological thriller was The Perfect Guess by Emma Rue. This one is set, um, is it set in that year? I've got 1988 written down, which like, I think it's is set in 1988, which like, yes, please. Or at least it might be dual timeline, but at least one period set in 1988. That's the best year ever because it's the year I was born. Um, and it's about a girl who goes to stay with her aunt. Like the aunt takes her to stay with like this family um, in a manor house. And she becomes really close friends with the daughter um, of the, that family. So like the two girls, like younger girls, or like teenage girls make friends. Um, but she agrees to help them with some kind of game. Oh yeah, it is dual timeline because it then got written down. But then we're also following timeline in 2019 when an actress has been asked to pretend to be a guest at like this weekend party at like a house. Presumably the same house. Very intrigued. Um, the next one I marked to read, I heard about on Biblio Obscura's channel. She did a video about the best dark and weird books that she read in 2020. And one that she talked about was called The Machine by James Smythe. So this one is about a woman who 
so this is like this machine that's been invented that can, I'm, I'm not quite clear if it can take memories out of your brain, like bad memories, you can use it to like extract bad memories, or whether it can just affect your brain to make you remember only the good memories or something like that. But her husband um, was in the war and is suffering from quite like bad, like PTSD as a result of the war. Um, and so I believe that these machines have been like now being like banned by the government because they do have like some kind of side effects in some way. Um, but she finds like an illegal machine and basically is trying to use it to help her husband. And it just sounds very intriguing. Uh, the next one um, I heard about on Savage Reads channel, Simon talked about this and he just, just, I think referenced it randomly in one of his videos as like one of his favorite thrillers. And I was like, well, I need to read that. Um, and it's Human Remains by Elizabeth Haynes. Um, and this one, I don't really know too much about it. I just know that it's about a woman who finds her neighbor's decomposing body. But like I said, Simon mentioned that it was one of his favorite thrillers and that was enough for me. And then the final one that I marked as to read, I heard about from um, Lauren, from Lauren in the Books. Um, it's Love in Color by Baloo Bal Baloa. I am definitely butchering that. Um, and I believe this is just a compilation of short stories um, that are all about uh, black love. And I know Lauren doesn't particularly enjoy um, romance for the most part. Um, but she like really enjoyed this and really and said there was a lot of really good like chemistry in these stories, which I'm all about that. So uh, definitely interested um, in that one. So that's it. Those are all of the books that I marked as uh, to read in February, March and April. Sorry for all the interruptions in this video, but we got there in the end. I would love to chat with you guys in the, um, <laughs> the video. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you have read any of these books, if you've got any thoughts on them or if you're excited about them, have heard about them as well or if you have been hearing about any great books lately and have been inspired to mark them as to read, I would love to hear that as well. Um, I will very soon be posting uh, the catch up for my Mark as to read for May and June. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That should be coming out probably, I think I'll have a recent reads going up after this and then that video will be coming out. So if you're interested in more books that I marked as true, stay tuned for that video. But yeah, I'd love to chat in the comments down below. Please uh, like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.